I'm with Cameron Reynolds, CEO of Volition RX. Cameron, at the last earnings call when we were together, we were discussing or announcing a COVID versus healthy test. Now that was 98.7% positive, but now we're talking about a prognosis test. Yes, absolutely. So let me just start by saying um, we have managed to keep the lab fully operational during the pandemic. Um, and through social distancing. It's a very big facility uh, in Belgium, as we've said, and uh, those who, who can work from home have been working from home. So we've managed to keep uh, our, all our operations fully operational during this pandemic. So we've managed to get all of this done. So yes, in, in April, we announced uh, on the earnings call, uh, very excitingly, we've used one of our assays uh, in conjunction with a supplementation assay, so two of our assays, seeing if we could detect a prognostic for COVID and the first step in that was seeing if we could tell uh, PCR positive COVIDs from healthies. And as you said, that was 98.7%, uh, which was very, very impressive and actually took us a bit by surprise. So now we've been in the process of seeing if we can work out as a prognostic. A prognostic means a, a diagnostic is do you have COVID? And there are plenty of those tests around. But what's really needed and a very big need during this pandemic is seeing a prognostic. So a prognostic will tell you once you're in hospital, um, are you likely to develop severe symptoms? So that's what we've been doing. And our, our chief scientist can tell you whether we've managed to see how we're going on the prognostic side. I'm very happy to say that the clinicians that we've been working with believe that our test has very strong potential as a prognostic predictor of the, of the severity of COVID disease. We've sent our kits out to laboratories in Munich and in Liège and they've used our test there and what they found in Liège is essentially that uh, more or less everybody that is COVID positive tested by the PCR test has elevated nucleosomes and what we found in Munich is that the level of elevation increases with the severity of the disease. Now we'll have just heard Jake there talking about uh, more detail about the, the science of the test, but you're going to give us some more detail about CE, Mark? Yeah, very excitingly, this is the same assays as we've used, uh, some of the assays we've used in our cancer testing. The cancer, you're looking for single nucleosomes with different structures. What uh, we're, we're, we think we're measuring in the COVID is long strings of chromatin. So the signal is very large, uh, very high in one or two of our assays for someone who has heart severe symptoms and because of that it's actually just one or two assays so we can very much stick to our low cost easy to use drop of blood uh, testing system so and because it's one of the assays that uh, we've been using in our, in our other trials uh, it's very close to being CE marked for, for those purposes so we believe there's a very good chance if the trials in the next level goes very well or well is to launch a product on plates and on beads, CE marked this year for Europe. And we'll, we'll see, we'll update as soon as we know what the timing will look like for the US and for Asia. And you've always said your tests will be accurate, but also low cost. Now, obviously we've seen some companies developing tests for COVID who are having huge costs in R&D. What will be the uh, sort of cost level of this particular test if it works out? Yeah, so actually it's been very little extra work for us beyond the trials and um, we'll be announcing in our earnings call, but we're planning now to mass manufacture the key components of our assays. So wait for the earnings call, we'll have full details on that, but um, we can manufacture them very economically and we could make it uh, priced as a normal ELISA blood test. And commercially, um, not only is it a very large market um, for COVID and other things, but also it's a serial test, so it will be taken if, if, if it goes as, as we expect, many times in hospital. So in a hospital visit, it might be taken 10 times um, during your stay to see the relative levels changing as because uh, as, it, it, it progresses with disease severity, which means it's good commercially for us. But again, we really want to keep it very affordable. And we'll hear from Jake again, uh, Dr. McAuliffe, our chief scientist as to the quality of the assays, the quality of the assays analytically now, that how good they can operate, and also what other studies have to be completed before we launch the first products. Our initial step was to show that nucleosomes were indeed elevated in COVID patients. The next step was to show that the elevation was related to the severity of the disease. We've completed that in Munich, 
successfully. And the final product stage is to show that the same thing is true in individuals. So over a period of, uh, of a few weeks, as the patient gets better or worse, do the nucleosome levels go up or down before they actually become better or worse so that it can be used in a predictive way. So in conclusion to all this, drawing it all together, if it goes ahead, what will be the effect do you think on, the, on this terrible pandemic that we have at the moment or as far as hospitals and patients are concerned? I, I think it'll be a very positive outcome because it's very low cost, it can be used a lot um, and because it's normal blood drawer, it can fit into the normal hospitalisation procedure. And uh, if, if it does prove to be a good prognostic, like it's looking, um, that could really help clinicians to better treat people and better triage those who are likely to be in trouble and those that can go home, which would also free up hospital beds, which would also give better outcomes. If you can intervene earlier, um, when someone's going to be in trouble, you can give them oxygen and intervene earlier. So we're very hopeful. It could be very useful clinically and uh, very useful to help save lives. And as you've said, there will be more details about this when we meet again to discuss your uh, earnings in August. Yes, we're taking this very seriously and we'll continue to do the extra trial work and the CE marking so that we can hopefully launch product as soon as we can and we'll have updates on the August earnings call.